Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to this countdown information session. So many of you are joining. I see the number uh, turning very quickly, already about 375. In no time, we'll be over 400 people. So good morning or good afternoon or good evening to you, wherever you are. I know this is a very global call. My name is Jay Harati. I head up the TEDx program here at TED and I'll be here with you for the next hour, an hour that we've packed with information to help you join forces with us. Here's what we're gonna do today. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give you an overview of the Global Countdown Initiative. Then we're going to talk about your participation, why it matters, but, and really why it matters right now. And finally, we're going to show you how you can participate, the few very simple steps that you need to take to apply if you haven't done so already, and then to set up your own TEDx countdown event. Makes sense as an agenda, it's pretty straightforward. What's countdown? Why now? How can I join? So before we dive in, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping notes. Uh, you, we are all experts in doing Zoom calls. I know you are on Zoom calls all day probably like me, but just in case. Uh, remember, the most important thing is to mute yourself. Uh, with 400 people on the call, we really need to keep uh, audio uh, clear. The chat line is its own fun party. So get in there and chat, share your ideas, share your questions. We are going to be grabbing some questions and we'll, we'll address them at the end of the call. Uh, if, you don't, if we don't get to your question, I'll tell you how to email the question to you so we can uh, address them as well. Okay. Um, now, I am delighted to have a co-host with me this morning, and not just any co-host, but someone who is leading the Countdown Initiative with all of us here at TED. Lindsay Levin, she is the founding partner of both Leaders Quests and Future Stewards. Those are two organizations that are focused on how to tackle tough global climate pro problems. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, Jay. It's great to be here, and hello, everyone. It's great to have you. You have been with us, uh, joint forces with us at TED since the very beginning of this and brought in a lot of energy and expertise. Mm -hmm. We're so lucky to have you and I'm lucky to have you as my co-host this morning. Well, thank you. I feel incredibly lucky to be doing this work and with so many fantastic partners. That's great. And now hopefully like almost uh, 425 more of those. So let's dive right in, Lindsay. Uh, can you tell our guests what is Countdown? Yes, of course, the first big item on our agenda, what is Countdown? Well, it's a global initiative to champion and accelerate solutions to the climate crisis, turning ideas into action. The goal, to build a better future by cutting greenhouse gas emissions in half by 2030 in the race to a zero carbon world. A world that is safer, healthier, healthier and fairer for everyone. Countdown runs from now until the end of 2021, when we have a major summit planned and events around the world. But now today, we want to focus on what's coming up for our launch in October 2020. We've zeroed in on five areas where action has the most impact. And the challenge is we need to address all of them. Countdown will explore answers to five big questions. In energy, how rapidly can we move to 100% clean power? In transport, how do we upgrade our cars, trucks, ships, and planes? In materials, how do we reimagine our cities and remake the stuff around us? And in food, how can we spark a worldwide shift to healthier food systems? And finally, maybe, maybe most importantly, nature. How can we protect and regreen the earth and reblue the oceans? On 10 10 2020, we'll launch with five hours of brilliant TED Talks, interviews, animations, performances, and other surprises, delivered by scientists, business leaders, mayors, activists, artists, and celebrities, all with the goal of making sense of what's happening and inspiring people to action. We've designed this as five one hour sessions, each with a rich, diverse mix of content. TED's customary blend of actionable, research-based, backed ideas and moments of wonder. So here's what you can expect. In the first session, where are we and why do we need to act? We'll explain climate science, the crisis and where we are today. 
We'll describe the race to zero greenhouse gas emissions, what that means and what we need to do to get there. Then in the second session, we'll look at the path to resilient regenerative economies. How do we put climate back on the political and social agenda? How do we create a cleaner, healthier, fairer future for all people on the planet? And what businesses can do and are doing to transform and transition? In the next session, we'll bring to life the future of energy and transport and materials. We'll show that we're further along with some of these changes than many people realize. And we'll paint a picture of what's possible when the right resources come together. And then we'll look at fairness, food and nature. We'll hear from voices across the globe on why climate justice matters, how tackling climate change can improve livelihoods and well-being. We'll look at farms of the future and explore how we work with nature and not against it. And then we'll end by asking, what's my role? Showing how businesses, investors and cities and all the people who work in them need to step up. The commitments and actions we need to take as well as the momentum that already exists. We'll hear about the many opportunities for every one of us to play a part in building a better future. Jay, back to you. That's great, Lindsay. Thanks. That's a fantastic overview of Countdown. And you know, for me personally, there's a couple of things that I've I've really been really excited about since the beginning of the initiative. First is the focus on the five areas where we get so much leverage out of them that really helps focus the mind. And the second has been kind of our very hopeful and solutions focused approach to climate. I know that's been embedded into the project from the beginning. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely, Jay. I mean, I think without being hopeful and positive and active and optimistic, you don't actually get anything done. Um, and, you know, our TED curator, Bruno Giosani, has been canvassing the globe for groundbreaking solutions. You know, for me personally, working on Countdown this past year has actually been a very hopeful experience. We can do this. We can do this if only we mobilize with passion and ingenuity. That's great. So um, we have uh, almost now 500 people here with us today. Yeah. They all believe uh, in, in they care about climate change and all they all believe that we can do it, they may, might ask us, why now? Is this the right time? Uh, Lindsay, can you help us make sense of that question? Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, in this COVID moment with the huge pressures and problems that people are facing all over the world. Um, I don't know if I can answer the question, but I know somebody who can. No better person than our special guest today, Christiana Figueres. Christiana, I'd, I'd love to welcome you. Switch on your camera. Christiana led the UN team that delivered the Paris Climate Agreement. She's the author with Tom Karnak of The Future We Choose. She's also a founding partner of Countdown. And she, perhaps above all anybody I know, understands both the scale of the problem and remains stubbornly optimistic that we can tackle it. So Christiana, thank you so much for making time to be with us today. We're thrilled to have you here. And I wanna start by simply asking why climate now? Well, thank you very much, Lindsay. Thank you for having me. Thank you to Jay. Thank you to the whole TED team. But especially, thank you to the, yes, almost 500 people yeah. who are in conversation with us today. Thank you very much for taking time um, from home or from wherever you are to join this conversation. So um, why now? Because we've run out of time. That's why. It's because we have known about the threat of climate change for decades. We have known that this is the biggest threat humanity has ever, ever faced. We have known about that for decades. We have done a little bit. We have, you know, some renewable energy, 25% of the electricity on the grids right now is, the whole grids of the world is renewable energy. We have some incursion into electric vehicles. You know, we've, we've done something. But honestly, clearly not enough. Clearly not enough. And the evidence is out there, right? We have fires like we've never had before. New York and Washington are under unbelievable heat waves. You have fires in Siberia. You have the, the famous fires in Australia at the beginning of this year and the end of last year, on and on and on and again. So nature is crying 
out to us to say, you know, okay, you try, but it's just not enough. Now, the other part of that is that we do have the possibility to correct the delay that we have had. And so science has been very, very clear and has told us this decade that we've just started, 2020, is the decisive decade. Now, I am a woman and I'm a Latin American woman. And Latin American women are very known for hyperbole and exaggerations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I actually use that to my benefit. But this time I'm gonna tell you something that is no exaggeration. And that is, that whatever we do and decide and invest and behavior patterns that we adopt over this decade will determine the future of humanity for centuries to come. That puts all of us, adults, the kids also, but mostly the adults who still hold the responsibility, it puts us in a huge, huge role of responsibility because Whatever happens in this decade will determine the future of humankind. Can you imagine that? I mean, just take a moment, you know, to really take that statement in and say, whoa, so everything that I am doing right now and over the next 10 years, but especially right now, will have this lasting, lasting effect. The cool and exciting thing about that is that we have such a fantastic opportunity to use this time period to create a better world. Can you imagine to be part of a team of humanity that you can say to yourself, I have contributed to creating a better world for centuries to come? Honestly, we're all doing things in our lives, right? We all do something, we all have a profession, we all do our you know, daily thing. And we have to continue doing our daily thing because all of our daily things are important. But overlying all of that is how do we use our daily thing, our daily habits, our daily decisions, our daily profession to contribute to creating a better world. And we all can. That's the fun thing, right? We have an extraordinary opportunity to start right now because if we don't start right now, we will not get on track, but we have a fantastic 10 year period to create a better world. All of us together, none of us individually can do it, but all of us together can. How exciting is that? Now, Christiana, one of the things you've been speaking a lot about is this opportunity to build back better at a time when our economies are in many cases on their knees as a result of the pandemic. Can you just touch upon this combination of building back and doing it in a way that makes sense for the, for the planet and the climate? Yeah, it's almost as though nature, you know, had told us or the universe or, you know, whatever out there had told us, oh, you don't want to be responsible of uh, human citizens? Well, let me give you a little slap in the face here to see if you wake up. That's the pandemic. It's a little slap in the face. And what it has done, of course, is, well, first of all, huge, huge health crisis. Secondly, the attendant economic crisis that has put millions of people and families out of job and out of income, which to me is the most urgent thing that we need to address. And then the third piece after that is going to be and when we start the wheels of the economy moving again, what kind of an economy are we actually going to create? Because there is nothing, absolutely nothing telling us that we have to recreate the economy that we used to have even just a year ago, let alone a decade ago. Nothing is condemning us to that. We actually have a huge opportunity to say, oh wow, now that the economy is on its knees, as we stand it up, let us stand it up tall. Let us stand it up tall for the future. So not, let's not build back, let's build forward. Let's look to see what do young people need when they're going to be the adults? What do we want to have as our legacy for the future of humankind? And let's look at that, let's focus on that and use everything that we have now, including green recovery packages that are already 
up to $12 trillion, but we'll go up to 20. Let's use that money and everything that we do to build a better future. One very personal thing that we can all do, I mean, go and, and it, this is true at all levels, right? It's true at the government level, it's true at the city level, it's true at the corporate level, it's true at the individual level. Now, for me, one of the huge lessons that I have already solidified in my life is why have I been traveling three times around the planet to go to a one day meeting? Ridiculous. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just not doing that anymore. And the pandemic has shown us we don't have to. So we can change our habits, right? We can change our habits. We can change our carbon footprint and we have to. Fabulous. Now we've got a tremendous diversity of people from all over the globe on this call who want to or are considering stepping into being TEDx Countdown partners. Some of them come from businesses and are thinking about how this is relevant to help shift uh, their company. And some of them are nonprofit leaders or students or activists. Just give us a little sense of how that broad spectrum of people each have a different role to play. Yeah, and, and it's on the one hand a little bit difficult to understand it, but on the other hand, it's very simple. And the simplicity of it is we are all humans on this planet and we have all contributed, some of us much more than others, to the situation that we have of increasing greenhouse gas emissions. And therefore, we all have a role to play. Now, obviously, there are systemic changes that need to occur, have been occurring, but need to accelerate such as regulations and policies and incentives that governments can put into place, be they national governments or be they subnational like cities and states. And that of course has a huge effect. To think about it in COVID terms, you know, the policies that governments have put in place for self-isolation, for example, or for social distance. Well, of course there is a very important role for those systemic changes and we all have to press for those because we can't do this without them and at the same time there's a huge space for corporate decisions many of which are already being taken that as companies build themselves back into the new normal that that new normal is going to be carbon efficient the fact is that corporations governments and we we individuals have just been wasting carbon, wasting carbon across everything that we do. And so many corporations have understood that they're actually going to open their doors in a much more carbon efficient way. And individuals, we have to do the same thing. We should all know exactly what our bank account is and what our carbon account is. We probably know what the bank account is, but how many of us know what the carbon account is? How many of us have actually just gone to Miss Google and asked her a oh, carbon calculator and up comes up a long list of fantastic organizations, all of whom have put up a carbon calculator. You go in there, you answer the questions and you figure out what is your carbon footprint. And then don't blame yourself. Some of us just by reason of where we live will have a very high carbon footprint, others not. Don't blame yourself where you are, just commit. Commit to figuring out what are the low-lying fruit that you can start doing right now to lower your carbon footprint immediately and then commit that at the very latest by 2030, you're going to be at half your current emissions because that's where we need to be, Lindsay. All of us as individuals, the whole planet, the whole planet needs to be at one half the current emissions by 2030. If we do that, that's our decisive decade. If we do that, we are well on track to creating so much better living conditions for everyone. Thank you very much, Christiana. I'm just gonna end with a final thought from you on the mindset that we need to adopt. People here wanting to be active on this, leading sometimes skeptical friends and colleagues along the path. Just a final word from you on mindset. Well, you know, no, Lindsay, um, I think for all of, all of everyone who's on the line now, almost 500 people, look at this conversation today as the best invitation you have ever received, ever, in your entire life. Because we're inviting you, A, 
to be an active participant of contributing to the greatest, greatest challenge and the greatest opportunity of humankind, literally getting active and doing it, A. B, understanding that you as an individual with your family, your community, your corporation, whoever your area of influence are, can have an extraordinary impact on creating a better world. And you can do all of this hand in hand with the best event team on the universe, on the planet, the TED team. So, you know, here we are inviting you to really understand that we can do this, that not individually, but collectively, and that's what TEDx is all about. It's throwing out all of those tentacles and collectively everyone in their own place, in their own home, in their own city, in their own uh, assembly hall to come together to figure out how are we going to do this? And just ask ourselves the question, what is my contribution? What is my contribution? Because we can. The first problem that we have to change, that we have to address is this mindset of, oh, climate change is so complex and it's so expensive and it's so weird and it's so, you know, whatever that we can't deal with it. Do not be overwhelmed by it. Every single one of us can contribute. And together, we can actually do this. Christiana, thank you so much for that encouragement. We so appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, we'll say goodbye now. We look forward to seeing you on 10 2020 Thanks for being here. Thank you. Jay, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you, Christiana. How lucky are we at TED and at Countdown to have you as a founding member of this initiative. Um, so you heard uh, Christiana saying, how can you contribute? So that's a great transition to the final and uh, well, fun, final part of the agenda. Let's talk about your local TEDx Countdown event and what it could look like. So first, let me just explain that the countdown events are powered by the TEDx platform. Many of you on here are TEDx organizers. Many of you, probably most of you have been to a TEDx event, but some of you maybe have never seen it. So uh, a, quick, a quick explanation. TEDx is a program that was created by TED to empower anyone anywhere in the world to create gatherings. And we're talking about gatherings that bring together ideas and people. Because we at TED believe that when you mix those two, that's how you can bring about positive change. You probably know that in a normal year, there are thousands of TEDx events that take place around the world. And uh, if you've been to, the, to any, you know that they come in all shapes and sizes. And a few slides are going to go, just, just four slides to, to give you a little sampling, four out of 4,000. But our events can be very big. They can be indoor or outdoor. Uh, sometimes they're small uh, and they're just show, showcasing and screening talks. Our events can be virtual uh, or they can be in person. So if you'd like to see uh, a more of a sampling, just do a Google search and you'll get to see. And we also uh, are happy to share more examples with you. Now, if you just got inspired uh, by what we've heard and you decide to join Countdown, then you are going to create your own TEDx countdown event. Uh, I'm gonna give Taylor a second to just mute so that I can hear an audio from somebody. Uh, okay, looks like we addressed that, thank you. So um, you create your own event and you got a couple of choices to make. The first thing you're going to do is you gotta choose your format. Is your TEDx countdown event going to be virtual or in person? Now, all of us here, most of us are, I think, North American based or Europe based. We assume that you will be creating virtual events. Uh, and guess what? There are limitless opportunities to producing virtual events that are fun and exciting and engaging. And we're gonna be showing you how, because we've been doing that already ourselves. The next choice you've got to be making is, uh, what kind of a program do you have? And you have two big choices there. You can simply decide to uh, create a viewing experience, a watch party around the talks that we create and that we will showcase in the TED Countdown Global event on 10-10-2020. Those are the 
the sessions and the talks that Lindsay mentioned earlier. You can take some of them and create a viewing experience, or you can go a step further and create your own original uh, talks on climate. Uh, and you still have a choice, you could do both. So you could mostly show talks, you could do a little bit of yours, you could do a little bit of, of a hybrid, hybrid. But the point is this, your event can be as simple or as elaborate as you'd like it to be. It's a flexible format and we are here to help you along the way. We're not gonna give you all the details today because this is just a high level information session. But when you make your choices, uh, we are going to be guiding you specifically on how to get it done. Over to you, Lindsay. Well, thank you, Jay. So for example, that means that if you're a company launching new climate commitments, you can use our content at a whole series of virtual town halls in multiple languages around the world to amplify the message you wanna share with employees, ignite new conversations in innovation. Or if you're a community-based organization, you can share your own stories, your own narrative, talk about the work that you're doing alongside Countdown's content. Great. And we are just a couple of minutes away from uh, starting a Q&A session. Let me remind everybody that if you want to ask your question, uh, type it into the chat. There's a bunch of folks uh, monitoring that there. And I'm going to give you a little bit of, uh, of a flavor for the handholding and support and training that we will provide you if you decide, decide to join us. So to make your event successful, we will provide you these resources um, in the coming weeks. First, we have training sessions, one on event management and the second one on event curation. Uh, next, we will provide you with a host kit and that will be a guide to your event preparation, the kind of activations that you can do, discussion, all kinds of exciting stuff. And lastly, we will provide you a design kit and the design kit is a great tool to promote you and brand your event to make it look great. It will include all the artwork from Countdown. You can then customize it to the name of your TEDx Countdown event, which will, which will be named after your community or business or organization, etc. All the branding will be there. So your event can not only be exciting, but can also look really good. So the, the way the process works is if you haven't applied already, um, you will apply. We will grant you a license. You will know the name of your event. Uh, and after that, you will start getting emails with all this information. By the way, if you haven't applied yet, I'm going to ask my team to drop in the chat the link uh, for the application, which is super, super simple, literally a minute or two uh, to do, and you can, you can do that today. Um, important fact to remember, uh, Lindsay did explain that this is a year-long initiative, but it kicks off on October 10th, 2020, and that's what we're talking to you about right now. You, can, you will be able to hold your countdown event uh, on October 10th of this year, starting after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or anytime in the days or the weeks that follow. Before it's time to do your event, like a, I think, I don't know, a week or two before your event, we will provide you with these things that are gonna be essential for you to be able to do it. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a library with all the digital files uh, of the videos of the uh, TED Global event, the sessions, if you wanna show them in full, or all the individual talks, if you wanna kind of break them down and mix and match and make your own event. Um, that's gonna be ready for you to screen at your events, either as, as it is or alongside content that you create. We will also be providing translation to eight different languages. So I saw in the chat, somebody's asking, is there anybody here uh, from India, I believe that we'll have Hindi is one of the eight languages that we are translating it to. I'm gonna ask my team to drop the eight languages other than English that we will provide translations. All the content will arrive at translations. Great for places uh, where English is not spoken. Um, and lastly, I think that you see the slide on here uh, of what's coming up. Keep in mind that our first training is August 13 and we want you there. So if you're thinking of doing it, don't delay, we want to see your application which, so we can lock down your name and your license so we can include you in that August training. Uh, over to you, Lindsay. Well, something exciting that we want to end with before the Q&A, a, a story about those of who, who have already applied. We want to share with you the current map of countdown organizers committed to hosting. Wow. We can't see, wait to see this grow, take a look. 
We have more than 200 people already signed up all over the world. And after today, we hope for many more to join us. Yeah, you know, we have, we have now 500 people here. And I know actually some of you represent multiple locations because some of you are actually heading up uh, global organizations with multiple offices, et cetera. So imagine if just like 50% of, of you will, uh, will create events, then, then the globe that we just saw is gonna double up with the number of dots on it. Uh, we'll, we really will be able to light up the globe without any carbon footprint. <laughs> so, that, so that will be nice. All right, um, I think Lindsay, we can uh, pivot to some q and I, I, I know uh, we'll be answering questions together. Uh, just a reminder, if you don't get your answer, uh, your question answer, we, you can also email to tedx at ted.com, uh, tedx at ted.com, and we'll be answering uh, to you uh, directly. Okay. Question, uh, the first one is, how do I host a virtual event? And I'm going to direct this question to my colleague, Will Davis. Uh, uh, Will, please, can you come online and, uh, and answer the question? How do I organize a virtual event? Sure, uh, virtual events can be as simple or as complex as you want, but we're gonna be delivering content the day before the event launches, the global event uh, launches. So you're able to take those talks and you can just play those talks, select and curate from the talks that are coming out of those sessions, or you can actually um, combine them with your own content. And depending on where you are, this could be uh, purely virtual. So it would be just those talks along with your local climate solutions that you've fact-checked and believe are strong and worth putting on. Or it can be in person, combining a studio environment where you're recording those talks and then the live stream from the event. And probably worth mentioning, if you're doing a virtual event, we've, we've uh, in the last few months at TED, have been doing many of them and across TEDx as well. We now have a toolkit and a playbook on how to make them really exciting, engaging, interactivity, and we will provide you with that toolkit. So if you're going virtual, you can feel very special with breakouts and discussions. You, you, there'll be all kinds of ideas uh, that you can have. There's already so many on the organizer guide right now. So in every TEDx organizer here, their organizer guide has three different sections that provide like step-by-step -step guides to that. Great, thank you, Will. Uh, Lindsay, the next question, it's for you. It's from Jack Polis, and the question is, I quote, beyond awareness and activism, what is desperately needed by this particular initiative and the sustainability movement overall to drive implementation and carry forward the ideas and specific projects that Christiana and others have created uh, with a question mark at the end. So I guess I should have read it with uh, a different thing. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think part of what we're trying to show people is that actually we all have a role to play. We're not sort of helpless and just held hostage by our various governments. So we'll, at the beginning of, of, of 1010, we'll share what we call the race to zero, which is about commitments, inviting all companies of all sizes all over the world all investors all, all over the world, in due course, universities, schools, community-based organizations, to commit to their own science-based path to halving emissions in the next 10 years and then getting to zero. And those standards and guidelines and tools are starting to come into place. Uh, there are various other ways you can do it. I, I see Charmian on the line from, from the B Corps. Uh, committing to be a B Corporation. If you look at our website, there's a section on what you can do at work and there's a section on what you can do at home in your city. And already you'll see a lot of guidance about taking action. So this work is about empowering us in our workplace, in the place that we live, as well as in our homes to take action. And all of our materials are designed to show people how to do that. Yeah, and you know, just kind of to add a little bit to that, what I've seen in the TEDx organization globally is um, there's a lot of innovation that happens by, uh, by the event organizers when they bring in the content and the people, some spark happens to them and they go, oh, this is the action that my community is ready to take. And it could be you know, innovative and it could be something that has not been seen before. And I know that with hundreds of events around the world, we're going to see that and we're going to see some, some exciting going to get some exciting uh, new ideas uh, for action. Okay, Will, I got a couple of questions for you, so I'm going to bring you back up. The first one is easy. What happens next with our applications? When will I hear back from the team? 
Sure. Uh, in terms of hearing back, uh, we're trying to get back to everyone within four days. Uh, so as soon as a registration is lodged to get a response back. Um, but one of the things to consider is that the naming for your event is a really important step. So we're trying to get back uh, and start conversations where people have, um, you know, perhaps named their events, uh, but not understood the naming guidance that was on the form. And we're trying to get back as soon as possible to resolve those questions. So uh, what Will is saying, maybe politely, so I'll maybe make that a little bit clearer. One way to get your application approved really fast is to take a moment to read the explanation of how to best name your event. And if you follow the guideline, if there is no issue with the name, you, will get, you, you can get approved very quickly. It's normally when there's a problem with the name is that we got to start back and forth. Um, that will save you time. Um, and then Will, I'm going to, you. I'm going to ask you a, a second question on sponsors. So this is from Georgiana. Um, and the question is, how can we engage sponsors in our community-based events? For example, we know our corporate sponsor has ambitious sustainability goals. Can we include them in our community event in some way? Sure. Uh, partnership is always critical for the local events. So one of the things you should consider is that even for a virtual event, you have time between the talks. You have the opportunity to have workshops or partner engagement where the partner can interact with the audience and where you can have promotions on your social media to sort of address what it is that the partner is doing. The main thing you just have to keep in mind is that you've got a really intelligent and media savvy audience and they want to see, oh, okay, this this is the partner speaking now, not the event. Yeah. So that's the, the clarity to make. Great, thank you. Uh, Lindsay, here's one for you. It's a, it's a real one, it's a tough one uh, from Robert Boer. Given that there will be a significant, uh, given that there will be significant forces working to get back to normal, um, how do we convince people to enter this new world? And, yeah, I mean, in a way, that's what this effort's all about, right? Um, you know, I, I think we've got to go back to the future rather than back to somewhere that's behind us. Um, and I would say there's a real genuine struggle at play right now between, uh, I'm, I'm, despite the British accent, I'm talking to, to you from the US, you know, there's a big struggle about uh, what kind of a future do we want to shape? What kind of industries do we want to back? I, I am personally very encouraged encouraged by how much changes are put. I, I actually, I'm much more hopeful than I was a year ago, um, despite the fact that clearly, you know, the economy, our economies are in tatters and, and people are suffering in many ways around the world. But in terms of addressing these long-term issues, I think there has been a, a, a real waking up going on. And part of what we'll share on 1010 is the number, for example, of businesses committing to proper science-based standards we, they doubled in, in a three month period at the end of last year. The, the number, it's exponential. This is not a straight line curve. So once things start to tip, it happens very fast. And what we've got to do is take a lot of things over those tipping points. So yes, there are all sorts of different forces, different opinions, different perspectives, but it's also encouraging, you know, there's tremendous change happening at the city level and the local town level. It's not only about what uh, national governments do. Um, there's going to be this tremendous change happening in small businesses as well as large. Um, so, and you know, for example, the UK where I come from, there are people just launching an initiative to get every school to be carbon zero by 2030. Huge efforts that people are, are pushing forward. And we've just got to be part of that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like in some ways, um, this this the pandemic has kind of made us all aware of our global connectivity and the, the impact of nature and and the fact that we're all in this together and we get in some ways like the mental state is, is really there for people to to engage um it's definitely a challenge well an easy one for you here uh just explaining the format is ted doing its own virtual event on 10 10 2020 and promoting it around the world or well, the only way be to watch the talks uh, through a local TEDx event. Actually, you know what, Will? I know the answer to this, so I'm going to just answer it if that's okay. Um, the answer is yes. The, the event that Lindsay has described uh, with the five sessions is the, the TED Global Gathering. It will be a five-hour-ish long event, five sessions, full-on thing, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and, and live-streamed. 
uh, online. So people will be able to see that content. But we believe that the real power of these ideas is not the fact that they can be seen. We believe that, the, that they can be seen in a local context with community and discussed and explored. So much of the opportunity for everyone in this room is to think about, okay, members of my community maybe are not going to go and watch five hours of a TED event on a specific day. But if I curate for them something, I host it for them, I pick the five talks that I think are most relevant to this part of the world. I create conversations. I fill the room with members of our community who are movers and shakers and influencers with citizens, uh, you know, just like um, people, members of the community. And I'm going to create some kind of uh, event that feels right for here. That's the power of it. It's less about the fact of whether it was seen or not, uh, because well, guess what? A tiny percent of the world, tiny, tiny, tiny percent of the world will come to that, uh, you know, uh, that event. Even if, if it's hugely popular, it will still be a small percent. Um, Lindsay, do you have anything to add to that? Is that a good description? Okay, good. You, you, I have you. something. <laughs> Yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm I'm saying like it's a lot of conversation about like can we like get everyone together in India under one event or can we get everyone in Belgium under one event? But I think that what you said is really important. The power of having that local connection and having people connect even for the discussion locally is going to be far more critical than trying to drag everyone into the one stream. So the power of what you're building with the local events is going to be that connection and that's that's how tedx is operated that's how we build this momentum and that's how we've gotten to so many people here today so yeah i think consider the value of that authentic local connection yeah so then the next question is really building on that lindsay um how can uh, this is i don't know where it's from how can i get people from my community to understand the initiative so it's one thing for me to say take it to your community but what's the secret sauce, um, I, I think you might have an idea. I know Christiana might as well have some thoughts. I don't know if she's still on, uh, but I'll let you take that and, and, and see where we go. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll provide you with, uh, take a look at the website and how we're messaging things. We'll be providing more and more of that information. We've also obviously got our own media campaign to get people aware of TED Countdown. And then I think you, you do need to kind of build in your own story driven by your organization or your community, whoever, whoever it is you happen to be, or if you're a business, you know, driven by your business, where you're, you're finding the right way to engage people in something that, you know, feels meaningful to them. Um, so I think that in some ways, the stories each need tailoring. Um, but this sense of, I, I think there is a deep desire to understand more. One of the things that's very striking is how muddled people are really about understanding what climate change is. You know, part of, part of what we're trying to do is to make this fun, make this easy to comprehend. Little, brilliant, animated one minute clips that tell you what, what do we mean by, by one and a half degrees? Why do we need to get to net zero, etc. So there's something about enabling people to understand better and then translating this into stuff that's actionable so i think part of the message to people is if they're willing to invest their time they're going to come away knowing far more about something that is incredibly important to, to their own future and they're going to come away feeling empowered um, in small ways and in large ways in terms of actually how they can play, play a role this isn't about being overwhelmed it's not about feeling hopeless or powerless it's actually about recognizing that we do have the power uh, to make change happen so really you're asking people to have enough curiosity to choose to show up and spend a couple of hours with you with some really magical and very compelling content hmm. and you know lindsay one of the things i learned in in virtual by using zoom uh for example for virtual meetings virtual meetings provide you a great opportunity for small conversations so i don't know if you know this feature on uh, zoom where you can send your audience to small breakout rooms and you define how how big or small those are. Because one of the most powerful things to do is you choose great content. You will have five hours of content from the TED Global event, from the Countdown Global event, and you might have some of your own. You choose what is your content, and then you could do a, a breakout and send people to talk about a certain talk. And that is a great way to engage community. Uh, we know that also from TED Circles, which is another initiative that we have. You get 10 people in the room, more or less from the same community. You give them a prompt and a call to action 
amazing things can happen. So don't forget that opportunity. Small group breakouts can be a, a part of every, any event that, that, uh, that can happen. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Do you mind if I just pick up a couple of things that I'm seeing a lot of people ask in the chat oh, that I think we, go, could go, just, go. we could just take yeah. quickly. One is, is the cost. So we're, we're making this available to people free of charge. That's part of our commitment. So the, the resources that we're describing now are available for you to use. And it's very important to us that, that cost not be a barrier. And the other thing is that I see people asking about whether they could spread their event over several days and what's the time period. We originally envisioned trying to get everybody to hold their events in the week after 1010. We've now embraced the fact that we should allow a longer period. I think Will, I'm, I'm correct in saying that we'll allow people to do events between then and the end of the year. And some people will do several sessions. Some people want to organize a series on climate change, depending on their, on their audience. And our materials are very well suited either to doing one event or to doing a series. So um, real freedom, we're trying to give you great freedom in terms of how you use this. Will, did I get that right from your perspective? Yes, if people wanna host events that are outside of that 10 to 18 window when there's gonna be this sort of massive global push, uh, then yeah, they're able to let us know and we'll respond and confirm. Great, and Will, while I've got you a couple of technical questions here uh, in quick succession, um, I think, Lindsay or somebody mentioned this, but just to read it, uh, Eliza is asking, will the countdown videos be available in advance for streaming uh, in the 1010 2020? When, when, when will the videos be available? Yeah, so at least 24 hours before, if you've signed up as an organizer, we're going to send you links so that you can access those before the rest of the world. So that's where if you're organizing, you can access those videos and then share. But even before that, like Jay, you mentioned earlier, we're going to have a curation preview for your teams so that you get a sense of what kind of content, what kind of ideas will be shared. And that way you can program accordingly for your local speakers and like balance out your program. Right, because if I'm an organizer and I'm hearing this, I'm gonna, what? If I get it 24 hours before, I don't get to plan. So you will get a sneak preview, but you know, there's also what, the, what, what we're describing is really a case for like, maybe not rush to do it on, the 11th of October, uh, give yourself a little breathing space, let the event play out, take the time to take all the content. The most important thing is that you curate, if your event is 90 minutes, that you make your event really beautifully kind of come together and uh, that, that maybe it's fun if you take a little bit of time to do it. Uh, Will, another technical question is, I guess I got people interested when I said, if you get your name right, your application will get approved. So somebody's asking, can you describe what is the naming structure? Um, maybe you can give an overview. Yeah, no, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to get that right for the form. So the, the form is pretty, pretty clear. If you're an existing TEDx event, you use your existing TEDx event name. Ultimately, this is going to be countdown presented by TEDx Sydney or TEDx um, Bangkok or, or these names. So that's going to be the, the first one if you're an existing TEDx event. If you are doing this as a local community, then indicating your city or your district, your suburb, your neighborhood, something iconic within the city, which is a location-based name, because that's where the ideas, your local ideas will be coming from. It's where your event's going to originate from, and that's going to connect people back to, this is my community. This is something that is evocative to me. If it's with a school or a university, then it's just TEDx and the school name, or TEDx and the university name. If you're a nonprofit organization, it can be TEDx and the nonprofit name, and that can be a public event. This is the first time we are co-branding public TEDx events with the, the world, with nonprofits. And that's because this is a mission that everyone needs to get on board with, and we want to have that sort of public presence because there are so many incredible allies already doing this work. Uh, and if you're a business, um, you can also use that name, but these are intended as internal events. You know, this is something where you get to connect your board, you get to connect your staff and team around this, and then you can have that presence there. You're still going to be represented publicly on our event map. There's still going to be recognition for the event, but your uh, event is for your uh, internal business community. If you want a public event, you can take out a public name, but it's not co-branded with a for-profit business. Great. Thank you, Will. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a quick follow-up, but let me just let everyone know. Um, 
we are going to close out the questions because I've got three here, one for you, two for Lindsay, and then we're going to run out of time. So if you've got any more questions that have not been answered, probably typing them into the chat now is not that productive. Remember, TEDx at TED.com uh, will get back to you. Uh, will, a quick one, because you just mentioned that your event will be listed. And I saw a question here from Jack Polis saying, how can we find out if there is already an event in our local area that we can build upon? Uh, which is really connected to kind of where is that listing and how can people connect with each other and partner if they want to? Sure. Well, unlike a regular TED event, a uh, regular TEDx event, this is going to be listed on the Countdown website. It's not going to be on the TEDx website. So the TEDx event map is not the place where your event will appear. Uh, Lindsay previewed the event map for Countdown, and we're going to be publishing a, a, a live map on the Countdown website on countdown.ted.com which will have local events and it will have one piece of contact information. So your social media presence, your website presence, we're seeing some teams start to build out their presence now. That's where it will be listed and we will be pinging you to get that information. We'll be contacting your teams to get that piece of information and to keep it live and current. So that's where it will be represented. There are also questions about like, I'm not seeing it in my TED.com profile, this is a separate initiative. It's going to be on the countdown site, not on TED. So don't worry if you don't see it in your uh, event manager for the experience. So, so go to TED.TED. TED. No, it's, is it TED.Countdown or Countdown.TED? Countdown.TED.com. Countdown.TED.com. Um, and then you'll, you'll find the event listing. If for some reason you're not sure, you can also ping us and say, hey, I'm looking to collaborate in my area, we'll be happy to help you. We've put in resources on this to help you have a smashing event. Um, thank you, Will. Lindsay, uh, a good one for you. Uh, this is from Brittany Amorim. As an educator, will the content be, will the content from the launch be suitable for middle and high school age students? Do you have ideas about how this can be brought into a school setting? That's a fabulous question. So TED-Ed are super engaged around this and we, we, we need to put out specific information for you. It, lots of it is very suited for schools um, and TED-Ed are doing some specific material to equip schools. So we're very keen to be out there with, with young people of all generations and making suitable material for that. And the answer to, to specifically is that you can take a TEDx countdown event with the, you will get the license after your school name. So, you know, whatever the, 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 the school name, and then you can choose content from the event or also there will be additional TED-Ed animations that are suitable. So you can kind of mix, mix and match. We're gonna have so much uh, content that's suitable to young people. Uh, a great opportunity. All right, last question. Okay, I, okay. Um, so this is from Marco Holbrook. On the local level of towns and cities, how do you suggest we focus on following up with, the, uh, with those we bring into our TEDx countdown to ensure that changes are truly followed up? It's kind of like this notion of a year long initiative too, you know, but maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, let me, let me say something about that. So some of our, we've, we've got about 50 partner organizations working with us already um, in deep partnerships. And that includes the global networks of mayors. Um, there's a number of different networks representing tens of thousands of cities and towns all over the world. Um, a lot of those cities are, have already got great climate commitments. If they don't, as citizens, you need to be active, asking your local officials to step up and, and help transform their cities. There's incredible guidance. You'll find it on, on our website around the steps that cities need to be making. So one of the things we'd encourage you to do is to reach out to your local officials, reach out to your mayor, see if they want to get involved in your local event. Uh, we know that they're committed to this journey with us and, and we know that we, you know, part of the conversation we're ha having with mayors and officials around the world is about now and about what happens next year, ending with the UN uh, summit in November. So please reach out in your local community and get those officials on board and show that you as citizens and voters care about action in your city. Great, great idea. Remember um, also kind of to, just to add uh, an element to that question, this is a kickoff, right? So 10-10-2020 is a kickoff. Uh, we're, 
we're not asking you to commit to more than that today. Uh, this could, could be a great event, uh, but it could ignite uh, energy and interest from you to continue to do more in the coming year. And we've got some other ideas that we'll follow up with. And you'll have the option to continue to activate your community around this with, with some follow-ups. It's 11.57, and one of the keys of doing a virtual event is also finishing up on time. Everybody's got their, their noon meetings uh, lined up. I wanted to thank everybody who made this possible. Our very, very special guest, Christiana, my co-host, Lindsay, all my colleagues here at TED, and most of you, most of all, to all of you who've come here today uh, to join us. Uh, we are delighted to have you. Don't forget to apply if you haven't done so already. We'd love to have you. And uh, questions, send them to TEDx at TED.com. So let this be not goodbye, but see you very soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Lindsay. See you soon, everybody. Thank you Thank so you. much for joining us. Thank Take you very care. much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you from South Africa. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you from Egypt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you from Ireland. Oh, I love this part. Keep going. Thank you from the Wetzel. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye from Italy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you from the Netherlands. Hong Kong. Merci. Well, new to new to me. From Ithaca. Thank you. Hello, Alto. Thank you from Saudi Arabia. Thank you from Brazil. Thank you from West Virginia. British Columbia. Bye bye. Thank you from Portland, Maine. Thank you from Uganda. Thank you from Stavanger, Norway. Hi from Cape Town, South Africa. Hi from Botswana. Botswana. Bye from Nigeria. Yeah. Helen Gang from Deutschland. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, wow. 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 Great. Well, thanks to everyone. We have yes, the globe. We have the world. So we have A the world confidence to see these people all over the world. Thank you, everybody.